Hi, welcome back to the series of lectures on major theory with course code MTC202. So, uh, in the last lecture, we state, uh, state a theorem uh, that uh, if uh, we have a given sequence of major functions which converges uh, to a function f in major mu, then we can always find a subsequence of that sequence uh, f and k such that uh, the subsequence f and k converges to f almost every time. So let's uh, state that theorem again. So statement is uh, if if a sequence uh, if a uh, if a sequence is uh, f n. If a sequence fn uh, of major functions of of measurable functions, uh, if a sequence fn of major functions uh, satisfies uh, fn converges to f satisfies satisfies fn converges to f in major mu for some f belongs to m for some f belongs to m where m is a collection of all measurable functions then uh, then this uh, then uh, there exists this uh, then then uh, then there exists exist is a, a subsequent is fnk of fn then there exist is then there exist is a subsequence fnk of fn of fn uh, such that uh, F and K converges to F almost everywhere. Converges to F almost everywhere. Uh, proof. Uh, oh, since, uh, since this uh, since F and converges to F in major mu, so therefore. For all epsilon positive, this limit, limit n approach to infinity, uh, mu star of the set x belongs to x, where f n x mod of f n x minus f x greater or equal to epsilon, the mu star of this set is major of this set is equal to zero. This is true for each epsilon positive. So in particular, if we set this epsilon is equal to n, so, so therefore for all n, therefore for all n greater or equal to one, I can choose uh, this uh, epsilon as one by n. Then for this limit, I choose epsilon as two for minus n. So for that limit, uh, so this limit is equal to zero. Uh, so limit of this set is equal to zero. So it uh, means that uh, it means that the mu star of this set minus zero mod is less than epsilon uh, for each epsilon positive uh, say epsilon may be different uh, for each epsilon positive it may be it's less than epsilon for all n greater or equal to some n naught so i will choose uh, uh, here this one this epsilon i will choose this epsilon as one by n okay and the limb and the epsilon of this limit i will choose that epsilon as two for minus n then for that epsilon i can find some positive integer and i will denote that positive integer by uh, kn so for all n greater or equal to one there exists kn a positive integer greater or equal to one such that this holds such that mu star of the set x belongs to x with mod of 
एफ एन एक्स माइनस एफ ऑफ एक्स ग्रेटर आर इक्वल टू वन बाय एन दिस वन है इज लेस देन टू पावर माइनस एन फॉर ऑल एन ग्रेटर आर इक्वल टू के एन and i can choose this sequence k n as an increasing sequence so for n equal to 1 i choose k1 for all uh, for all n greater than equal to k1 then for n equal to choose i choose uh, this as k2 where i will choose k uh, for all n greater than equal to k2 but i choose that k2 as as greater than k1 this i can choose because uh, i had to set this inequality for all n greater than equal to k2 so i choose k2 so large such so that it will be greater than k1 Okay, then for n three I choose k three so large that it is greater than k two. So this I can done. Okay. So so uh, without loss of generality, without loss of generality, without uh, without loss of generality, we can assume that we can assume that the sequence. This you can say this you can scale n is 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 strictly increasing is is strictly increasing sequence so of positive integers. Now, uh, now uh, we will uh, define a set. Uh, define a set. Define a measurable set. Uh, define uh, define a measurable set. Define this E n is equal to. Let's define this E n. It's a measurable set. Uh, define E n is equal to x belongs to x. Such that uh, mod of f k n x, such that uh, mod of f k n x minus f x, it's mod greater than equal to one by for all n. I will define this for each n, e one, e two, so on and so forth. That clearly they are measurable sets because uh, because because uh, this uh, this the function under model is is actually measurable function f k n is measurable f x is measurable difference is measurable and mod of measurable function is measurable so therefore each n then each n then each n is measurable then each e n is measurable is it's measurable. Now define another set. Now define define a measurable set. Uh, now define define a measurable set. Define a measurable set E, which is equal to the which is equal to intersection M runs from one to infinity and here it's the union and runs from M to infinity, e n. It's measurable because uh, it's the countable and uh, it's countable union and countable intersection of measurable sets. So it's a measurable set. E is a measurable set. Then uh, you can see then then this uh, then this uh, mu star of e, which is called the mu star of this intersection of unions. But uh, this intersection of unions is a uh, Is bigger, is smaller than the union, so it's 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 lesser equal. It's mu star. This is lesser equal to. If I will remove this intersection, it's lesser equal to mu star of union e n r runs from m to infinity. M runs from one to infinity. But uh, the sets, uh, the major of those sets. Uh, Where, uh, but this is true. You can see by definition of E n here. Uh, what's E n? E n is the, this set. 
en is this set okay and uh, the major of those sets is less than 2 power minus n okay it's less than 2 power minus n so here uh, i will uh, apply the sub additive property of outer major it's less or equal to summation and runs from m to infinity mu star of e n now what's mu star of e n actually so we have this this implies uh, this implies this mu star of e is less or equal to summation and runs from m to infinity mu star of e n but mu star of e n is less than it is strictly less than its summation and runs from m to infinity it is strictly less than 2 power minus n or you can say 1 by 2 power n by definition yeah e n now look at this sum uh, this sum is uh, it's it's equal to it's equal to 2 power minus m plus 1 you can easily calculate it is a geometric series uh, 2 power minus m plus 1 minus m plus 1 so uh, letting this m approaching to infinity uh, this will approach to 0 approach to 0 as m approach to infinity so therefore therefore mu star of e is equal to 0 the measure of the set e is 0 which means e is a null set now we will show that uh, uh, this uh, fn it fn fkn it convert it will converge to fx outside of this e so that will prove that fkn converges uh, almost everywhere to function f okay so let's choose any point x uh, which is uh, not in e now let now let x be not in e what's e is the intersection is the intersection uh, what's e is the intersection m runs from uh, m runs from uh, 1 to infinity then n runs from n to m to infinity is the intersection m runs from 1 to infinity and the union n runs from m to infinity e and that's e x is not in e means uh, x is not in the intersection that means there exists some m so for some m this implies uh, this implies uh, this implies uh, x does not belong to x does not belong to the union and runs from m to infinity e n for for some m but now it's not in the union so therefore it's not in the any set this simply x does not belong to e n for all n greater or equal to m for all n greater or equal to m so x is not uh, in any such set so but whenever x in the set then mod is less than epsilon less than one when this implies this implies uh, for those uh, sets this implies mod of uh, mod of by definition mod of f and k x f k and x minus f x is greater than one by n for all n greater or equal to m for all n greater or equal to m this implies that uh, this implies uh, not a greater less it's less so it's less actually here uh, because it's in, in the complement it's not in the set actually so, uh, so it's less than one, but okay. So here I, I can see it uh, from here, where I have. And now look at this definition. Whenever x in E n, then this mod of f k n x minus f x. This uh, is greater or equal to one way. Now this x is not in E n. That means f k n x minus f x is less than one way. And okay, it, because it's in the complement one. Okay, this is less than one band, which implies that uh, which implies that f k n x converges to f x for all x not in E. So why the why the outer measure of E E is equal to zero? So which implies that this converges 
f k n converges to f almost everywhere because this convergence is hold outside of e where the where major of e is equal to 0 so that proves this uh, theorem completely now uh, uh, we will see that this uh, uh, in the in next example we will see that uh, that this uh, convergence is uh, almost convergence uh, limit by limit convergence uh, if f and x converges to some function point wise it does not imply that it will converge in major that's next ex example okay so point wise convergence does not imply convergence in major in general in general so let x equal to r let's take x equal to r And let's take major mu is equal to the Lebesgue measure on R. And define, now define is three cases, and define and define. And define Fn is equal to characteristic function of n to n plus one. Then you can see this. Then this Fnx converges to zero for all x belongs to r you can easily verify this it's very simple for, for instance suppose x is in r then x must belong to some interval okay uh, suppose x is in r so x is somewhere in r here i will choose this i will choose n so large that this interval n to n plus one then x is not in this interval okay so therefore, therefore f and x are for this it's equal to zero. So that means whenever a limit is approaching to zero, limit of f and x must be equal to zero. Because whenever you fix x, so it must be somewhere on real line. So I will choose n uh, so large such that uh, that x does not lie in the interval n to n plus one. Then I will letting this n approaching to infinity. Obviously, it will not in the, any such interval. Uh, so f and x must be equal to zero for all n is the okay uh, which are uh, uh, for all such n so let's choose this so you say let's choose this m here i will choose it m okay m so large then obviously x does not belong to any interval or you can say so f and x equal fmx is obviously equal to zero because fmx okay fmx is obviously equal to zero because fmx is equal to the characteristic function of m m plus one and you can see this fnx is also equal to zero fnx is also equal to zero for all n great radical to m. So that's why this limit is always equal to zero for all x long stuff. So it's it, it, it is a point wise convergence. But we'll see, but but you can see this. But uh, you can see this uh, the Lebesgue measure of the set x belongs to R such that uh, mod of fnx uh, we don't need mod here for actually so this limit is equal to zero so mod of fnx minus zero actually greater or equal to one if i will choose this epsilon equal to one for each uh, if, if if for instance if suppose this fnx converges to zero in major in major then mod of fnx minus zero greater or equal to epsilon limit of that set must be equal to zero limit of the major of this set must be equal to zero if the convergence is in major if fnx converges to zero in major lambda then the limit then the limit must be equal to zero for each epsilon positive let's set epsilon positive is equal to one now look at this fnx is greater or equal to one x belongs to r so that means it's actually the Lebesgue major of this set because it's greater equal to one means, but it has only two values, either zero or one, because it is a characteristic function. So this is greater equal to one, therefore its value is equal to one. So which means that this x, uh, this x is actually in the interval n to n plus one. So actually you are calculating this actually, the big measure of this, uh, this set, the big measure of this set, the interval n to n plus one. Okay. Because this is greater than or equal to one, therefore its value must be equal to one. So which means that x belongs to this interval because f n is actually the characteristic function. It's actually the characteristic function of this uh, 
it's actually this uh, characteristic function of n n plus one. So whenever its value is equal to one, that means the x belongs to this. And whenever x belongs to this, its value is equal to one. So it's actually if and only. That's why this equality holds. The weak measure of this set is exactly equal to this, which is equal to one, and which never converges to zero as n approaches infinity. So that means this f and x does not converge to zero in major. Okay. So which implies that which implies that f and x does not converge to zero in major lambda, but it converges to zero. But f and x converges to zero pointwise. This is pointwise limit. Okay. So that's an example of a sequence which converges to zero pointwise, but does not converge to zero in major. And uh, this is true. Uh, this is true. Uh, if uh, if the sequence converges pointwise, then it will converge in major. If if the if if, uh, if if the major space is finite, actually. And here you can see this major space is not finite because x is whole real line R, and its major is not finite. But in case the major space is finite, then this will hold. Okay, that's this this theorem. So let's uh, state this theorem. Uh, Assume that uh, this major space is finite. Assume that. Assume that the major of x is finite. Okay, that means our major space is finite. And if uh, if uh, if, uh, if if a sequence uh, if a sequence uh, if a sequence f n if a sequence f n uh, Of major functions, uh, if a sequence is f n of measurable functions such that uh, this sequence uh, converges to f almost everywhere. This limit is almost pointwise limit, and it's also almost everywhere. Then this converges to f in major. Then f n converges to f in major, provided that the major space is finite. So proof, uh, you can see this proof. Proof is very simple. Uh, I will leave it for you. It's at page number one four eight. Page number one four eight. You can see this. Page number one four eight on elephants. Okay. So it's very simple. Uh, now next, uh, we will give uh, an example uh, of a sequence of uh, major functions uh, which will never converge at any point, but but converge in major. Okay, so that's the next example. Okay, so let me write it in the next page. Okay, so it is an example uh, which uh, in which we will show that uh, there is a sequence of major functions uh, which never converge to any point. Uh, which never converge to any point, but it will converge to zero. It, it will converge to some function in major. But it's not a uh, pointwise convergence. So consider this interval. Uh, consider consider our space x equal to zero. Okay, x equal to zero. And lambda, this major is equal to lambda. Okay, let's fix these two things. For each and we divide for each n. For each n, we divide. We divide this interval zero to one into n sub intervals. Into into n sub intervals. Okay, like this. Into n sub intervals, say zero to one by n, then one by n to two by n. So on and so far, 
it's been, been lost to one n minus one by n two n by n that's equal to one. So these are n sub intervals for each n. For n equal to one, we have zero to one. For n equal to two, we have zero to one by two. Then one to two by two. That's one. Two. Then then this uh, it's here. Uh, sorry, it's here one by n to two n. Okay. For n equal to two, it's zero to one by two and one by two two. So for instance, if we if you want to see this uh, for instance. For instance, we have this. We can actually, if n is equal to one, we will start with this. If n is equal to two, it's zero to one by two. Then one by two to one, and for n is equal to three, it's uh, zero to one by three. And then it's two by. Then it's a uh, one by three to two by three. Actually, it's uh, sorry. Then it's. Uh, and then it's uh, uh, it's uh, one by three to two by three, and then it's uh, two by three to one. And for n equal to four, we have this. So again, it's zero to one by four. Okay, it's not here. Oh, no. Then uh, it's uh, one by four to one by four to two by four. Then uh, two by four to three by four, and then uh, three by four to four by four, which is equal to one, and so on and so forth. We have this sequence, and let's uh, choose uh, the characteristic function on n s sub interval. So we choose any n s sub interval from this. Uh, so this one, suppose this is the first interval. Uh, so f1 will be the characteristic function of this interval, and this is the second interval. F2 will be the characteristic function of second interval, and f3 will be the characteristic function of third interval. F4 will be the characteristic function of fourth interval, and so on and so forth. So let's uh, let let uh, let f and denotes the characteristic function of the nth interval. Okay. Let f and denotes the Characteristic, characteristic function of nth sub interval. That is, uh, that's what's f1. F1 is the characteristic function of zero to one by two. F2 is the characteristic function of one by two to one. And now f3 it's the characteristic function of 0 to 1 by 3 f4 it's the characteristic function of 1 by 3 to 2 by 3 and f5 it's a characteristic function of 2 by 3 to 1 and so on and so forth okay it's like this it's like this then uh, uh, we will see that uh, this converts to zero in major mu. Now we show that uh, we show that this f and it converts to zero in lambda. So let f not be any positive number. Now uh, we want to calculate this Lebesgue measure of this set. X belongs to the interval zero one, where this mod of uh, f and x minus zero, okay, f and x minus zero is uh, greater or equal to epsilon. I want to see this Lebesgue measure of this set. What's the Lebesgue measure of this set where this uh, f and x is greater or equal to epsilon, but it is only two values uh, because f and x, it is the characteristic function. So it's either zero or one. So that means x belongs to some interval, but uh, but you can see uh, this uh, this uh, this division of that interval. So x is obviously in some interval. Uh, you choose n so large, uh, say here you can see you choose n so large such so that uh, x must be in somewhere. X must be in somewhere. Then actually uh, this x is in some interval. So there is some n such so that. Uh, so that x belongs to this interval, either in this interval or this one, any interval. And you can see the length of that interval will, will, will approach to zero. So you can see this one. 
this will obviously approach to zero. This will obviously approach, approach to zero as an approach to infinity because uh, because uh, it's it's the characteristic function of n s of interval. So, but uh, this is greater than equal epsilon. So, but it has only two values, zero and one. Here, it's greater than equal epsilon. Therefore, this must be equal to one. So, whenever it's equal to one, then x belongs to the, that interval. But that interval must be must be among among these intervals. Okay? Must be either uh, say it's either one by n to two by n or two by n to three. It's uh, any, any 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 among any such intervals. So, you can see this length will always approach to zero. Length will always approach to approach to zero. So uh, you will uh, see this. Uh, this is actually uh, approaching to zero, but uh, so therefore, uh, therefore, therefore, f n converges to zero in major lambda. But we'll see that. Uh, but uh, but. But we'll see f n x does not converge to zero for all x, for all x in the interval zero to one. So let's fix, let x belongs to the point zero. We'll show that uh, it will not converge to, it will not converge to zero. Okay, so let's fix this point. Okay, let's fix this point. Then obviously uh, this x belongs to some interval. Uh, some for that uh, where, where it will lie. Uh, then uh, say suppose x equals zero. Suppose for instance x equals zero. Let's look at this x equals zero. Now look at this point here. The construction x equals zero. See. X is here. So the value of the characteristic function of this interval will be equal to one because x is zero and the rest equal to Okay, but uh, if we continue uh, this process of subdivision uh, for n plus one, for n plus one, okay, by setting n plus one, you have to choose zero to one by n plus one. Then x is again in this. Then the, the uh, then the uh, then the f of uh, uh, what what I mean to say that if x, if we set x equal to zero, then this will be uh, this will be say this is the case of interval. Then we have to say f k f k is the Characteristic function of k sub interval that that value will be equal to zero, but uh, we have next some say m sub interval where this zero lie because for the next for any uh, for, for for say n plus one we have zero to one by n plus one one by n plus one to two by n plus one so we have another sequence section set up uh, we have another set of uh, we have another class of these closed intervals uh, for n plus one and uh, for the first interval it will contain the zero and the first interval for uh, for this first interval uh, we have we have a characteristic function of that interval suppose this is the mth suppose for for n this is say kth interval for n plus one this is mth interval and uh, uh, this uh, uh, the correct the the, uh, the, uh, the characteristic function the uh, the f uh, the f m the function f m which is the which is the characteristic function of m sub interval the value of that function will be equal to one and if you continue this process say n plus two we have say m two we have to say this one uh, at that time this will be suppose m two a sub interval then the value of the characteristic function of these m two sub interval will be equal to zero so what I mean to say that this limit will never approach to zero because uh, uh, because uh, after every some finite state, its value is equal to one. In between, its value equal to zero. But after every some finite state, its value always equal to one. So in general, if if we choose x any point, so it will lie in some interval. Obviously, say so suppose uh, it will lie here. Say so suppose this is this is the case of interval. Then the characteristic of, then the value of the characteristic function of that k sub interval will be equal to one. But in the next process, if we choose uh, say n plus one, so then that x must lie again in sub sub interval. Again, the value of that again the value of the characteristic function on that sub interval will be equal to one. So so here you can see again uh, after every some finite stage, the value of the characteristic function is equal to one. So therefore, limit will never be equal to zero. So that's what I mean to say. This limit will never approach to zero. So then, uh, then, then this uh, 
f and x will never approach to zero. So uh, this uh, proves this uh, example, uh, uh, this uh, section completely actually. Uh, in the next section, we'll discuss integrable function. But first of all, I want to discuss this. Uh, so uh, here, uh, uh, in this uh, major theory, we have said that's called the Cantor set, which will denote by C. I will not construct that set here, but it has uh, some interesting property. It's closed it, uh, this C set Cantor set, it's a Cantor set. It's a Cantor set. It's a Cantor set. So, it's a Cantor set, okay? These are some properties. Uh, it's Lebesgue measure zero. It's closed. C is closed. And this uh, that that's one of the important properties. The C is uncountable. So it is an example of a set which is uncountable, and it's a null set also. It's Lebesgue measure is equal to zero. So its cardinality is it's it's uncountable. Therefore, cardinality of C is little c. The continuum hypothesis okay. It's little c. But every subset of C is also the big measure because uh, every subset of C is again a null set and null sets are always measurable. So which means that uh, which means that uh, if we uh, uh, so this every subset how uh, what's power stop C power stop that's a class of subsets of C they are all measurable so it's subset of collection of all measurable sets. So which implies that uh, the cardinality of power stop C is lesser or equal to cardinality of lambda, which is equal to 2 power c. But here again, it's also equal to 2 power c because because uh, because uh, it's a, because the cardinality of c is c. So if I take the collection of all subsets of c, then the cardinality of that collection will be equal to 2 power c. So which means that uh, which means that uh, which means that uh, the uh, the cardinality of collection of Lebesgue measurable sets is equal to 2 power c. But the collection, the cardinality of the Borel sets is equal to C. It's not equal to 2 power C. Because uh, there are, there, uh, you, you can prove this, it's very simple in terms of open sets, you can prove this. But uh, but here, 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 is, here is an exercise uh, that will show that, uh, that will prove this. Uh, there is a, there, there is a make measurable set, which, there is a Borel set which is not make measurable. And uh, that will result, uh, is uh, there's a set which we called it's a subset of uh, so so every subset every subset of C is big measurable uh center set uh, every subset of C is living measurable every subset of C the center set is Lebesgue measurable, but but uh, there exists a subset of C which is not a Borel set, which is which is not a Borel set. Okay, so there is a subset of C which is not a Borel set. It's not a Borel set. So that means that every measurable set need not be a Borel set. And in fact, its cardinality is C, the continuum hypothesis, but the cardinality of the Lebesgue, Lebesgue measurable sets, it's two parts. So it's a, it's, it's a much bigger class actually, this class of measurable sets. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, this, uh, you will see the proof of this, that uh, there exists such set, it's at the page number 143 on Alprins. If you are interested, it's at page number 143 on of Alpins. So you can see, uh, you will see this proof, okay? So uh, this is uh, this is the end of this uh, section. Uh, so now we are remaining only one section of this lecture series that is the Lebesgue integrable functions that we'll discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.